The following program presents principles designed to promote good health and is not intended to take the place of personalized professional care. The opinions and ideas expressed are those of the speaker. Viewers are encouraged to draw their own conclusions about the information presented. Hi and welcome to Health for Lifetime. Are you a vegetarian? Uh, we're going to talk about that today. I'm your host Don McIntosh. We're going to talk about some advantages that come by having a vegetarian diet and also some concerns people have. Talking with us about this important subject is Dr. Nedley. And Dr. Nedley, Thank you're you. from Ardmore, Oklahoma still, isn't that right? That's right. Uh, but you, there you, for you, 18 years. you travel around the world and uh, you talk to a lot of people about this subject. Uh, you've written a book, Proof Positive, and uh, also Depression, The Way Out, working on several other books. But what are some of the advantage, first, advantages, rather, first off, uh, concerning the vegetarian lifestyle that you've discovered in your research? Well, uh, vegetarians do live longer, uh, significantly longer. If you're a careful vegetarian, uh, you can live up to 15 years longer than someone in the general population. And the advantages are uh, way beyond that. Uh, not only do they have less cancer, uh, less heart disease, uh, but they also have improved mental health uh, compared to the average non-vegetarian. Uh, they actually make more melatonin uh, at night, uh, which can be uh, helpful uh, in a number of ways. Uh, also, you can decrease the amount of heme iron. Heme iron is a pro-oxidant. Uh, which can uh, cause some premature aging uh, factors and also increase the risk of cancer and heart disease. And if you're a p totally plant-based vegetarian, uh, you're not getting cholesterol in the diet, and so you don't have to worry about the oxidized cholesterol and the, the significant atherosclerosis that people uh, on uh, cheese, uh, dairy, and meat uh, have to worry about. So are there any plants you shouldn't eat? Yes, uh, we wouldn't recommend eating tobacco. <laughs> uh, there are definitely uh, poisonous uh, mushrooms uh, and other plants that you shouldn't eat. Uh, we're talking about edible plants okay. that, are, uh, that are healthy for you. So don't just head out into the woods right now, right? <laughs> so right. Uh, uh, fruits, nuts, grains, and vegetables, uh, basically the things that are there in the original diet. We're discovering by all these studies that they have real advantages. Absolutely. Well, you know, someone's out there saying, oh, no, another program on vegetarianism. Well, don't they know about the concerns? What about this? What about that? And, uh, you know, every time you talk about this, I'm sure that you have people to come up and say, what about this? What about that? Yes, that's right. One of the concerns is protein. Uh, we've uh, dealt with that uh, on a, uh, a previous uh, topic where we studied the protein concern out completely. But you can get all eight essential amino acids in abundant amounts without ever consuming animal protein. If you have a baked potato, if you have brown rice, if you have, what were the other ones? Sweet potato? Yeah, virtually any vegetable uh, or grain, you're going to have all eight essential amino acids uh, that if you ate enough to maintain your weight, you would get plenty of those eight essential amino acids. Fruits would be the only exception. If you're just a fruititarian, uh, you may short yourself in those eight essential amino acids. Yeah, if it's just blueberries, you probably right. blew it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What about someone that says, what about your iron? You're not going to get enough iron. Well, uh, Eat these nails. <laughs> <laughs> No, you can get plenty of iron in the vegetarian diet. Uh, it's true that you can be on an unhealthy vegetarian diet that is short in iron. Okay. Uh, and so just because you're a vegetarian does not guarantee that you're going to get enough iron. In fact, uh, uh, you can, uh, it's kind of interesting, one of the physicians who utilizes me a lot and consults me particularly for gastrointestinal problems likes to joke about my vegetarian diet and he will say, consult Dr. Nedley uh, regarding cirrhosis of the liver due to vegetarian product. 
Well, of course, <laughs> he's talking about alcohol. Alcohol is a vegetarian product, but it's not a healthy vegetarian product. And some vegetarians might be eating cake and ice cream and soda pops all day long, and that's not going to be healthy. Mm -hmm. uh, that's going to be a very unhealthy vegetarian diet. And so you can short yourself in iron, but what we have as a graphic are the foods that are pretty high in iron. Uh, you can see uh, that uh, avocados at the bottom of the screen are going to have two milligrams of iron, mangoes two milligrams, whole wheat flour uh, four and a half milligrams. By the way, white flour uh, virtually doesn't have any. In fact, they have to try to enrich it. They add 20 percent of the iron back. Uh, almonds, excellent source of iron, uh, five milligrams of iron. And then we have foods that are even higher yet in iron uh, on the next uh, graphic. So like rice bran and these types of things, even higher? Uh, well, yeah, rice bran is very uh, loaded. Of course, there are concentrated uh, foods uh, like rice bran. Tofu is a concentrated food, very high in iron. Uh, sunflower seeds uh, are quite high in iron. You can see nine milligrams of iron. Soybeans, eight. Spinach is actually an excellent source of iron as well. Okay. And so it's easy to get enough iron. Now, how much iron does meat have in a serving? About two milligrams. Not very much. So, uh, you know, it, the heme iron is more readily absorbed. It can be absorbed maybe almost twice as readily as plant iron, but uh, you can see most of those plant foods had four milligrams or more of iron in it mm -hmm. uh, per serving. And so that would be, um, uh, it's very easy to get enough iron on a vegetarian diet. Well, you talked about something there. You said the heme iron is easier to absorb than the plant iron. What are the things we can do to enhance the absorption of iron? Yes, even the, the non-heme iron can be more readily absorbed if we pay attention uh, to that. And uh, factors that decrease the absorption of iron, caffeine is one of those factors that significantly decreases the absorption. Decaf will also do it because of the tannins. And calcium supplements in dairy also uh, decrease the absorption of iron. Uh, being an athlete does not decrease absorption, but increases red cell turnover, increasing the need for more iron. Because they so wear out sooner. That's right. This is one of the reasons why athletes uh, need a little more iron. In fact, I've seen many runners, for instance, particularly female runners, uh, short themselves in iron, and of course that will affect their running ability. Well, you know, the average uh, red blood cell, what, lives 120 days, I think I remember. Mm -hmm. uh, what happens when you're a runner? About 90 days. About 90 days. Yeah. It just gets worn out. It's going around the loop too quick. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, we're not exactly sure why it's destroyed prematurely, but it is, and it may just be the process of running itself uh, through those capillaries that, uh, that smashes them uh, and destroys them. Well, you know, elephants and rhinoceroses and some of these animals are huge animals, but I do hear this uh, concern coming up that uh, children that are raised with a vegetarian lifestyle may be stunted in their growth. Yes, uh, actually uh, that is a, uh, a false concern. Uh, but there was an interesting study done by Dr. Uh, Sabate in California showing a comparison of the growth of vegetarian children with meat consuming children in the same geographic area in Southern California. Uh, those meat eating children were slightly taller than the vegetarians until age 10. And then after age 10, uh, the vegetarians caught up, and by age 18, the vegetarians had surpassed their median counterparts, being at least an inch taller as adults. Mm. And so uh, a lot of individuals don't realize, although as a young child, the meat-eating children tend to um, shoot up a little shoot quicker. Up a little quicker. Is that because of the protein, meat yes, protein? Yes, yeah, it's because of the higher protein. But what happens is their bony plates close. Too soon. Uh, quicker, too soon, and so they quit growing, and the vegetarians continue to grow, often up until age 18, they're still growing, uh, and so they end up being taller. Well, that's interesting. So another word, another myth kind of crashed and crushed there. Well, another big concern, I mean, I hear it a lot over the years as the people in my church have done health programs, and of course I'm involved in those, um, and that is, what about vitamin B12? And of course that's, that's a concern. Uh, well, how do you answer that? What's the latest and greatest? Well, that is probably the single uh, <coughs> biggest concern 
uh, for plant-based vegetarians uh, is B12. And the reason for it is B12 isn't really in plant foods. Uh, it is uh, not made by plants, nor is it made by animals. Actually, B12 is made by bacteria. And uh, interestingly, we have a lot of bacteria in our mouth. Uh, those bacteria can make B12. And so if you don't brush your teeth uh, a lot, you might actually absorb more B12 uh, <laughs> and get more B12. You're not recommending that, though. We're not recommending that. Okay. Uh, B12 is also, uh, you know, in the dirt. And so if we don't wash our fruits and vegetables, uh, <laughs> we'll get a little more B12. Okay. These are two ways you're not really recommending. <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, your colon makes a huge amount of B12 because your colon is teeming with bacteria. A lot of people are not aware that one-fourth of the weight of your bowel movement is bacteria. I was uh, not aware of that. <laughs> <laughs> huge but thank you for bacteria. making me aware of that. Okay, so the bacteria is there. The bacteria is there. It's making lots of B12. The problem is B12 is absorbed in the distal ileum, close to the colon, but there's a mm. valve there for good reason, so we don't de-sterilize the small bowel. Uh, but if that valve is incompetent, you'll make plenty of B12. Uh, and I mean, not make it, you'll actually absorb plenty of B12 in addition to your colon making it. But you so can't you'll count never on need your, a B12 supplement. You can't count on your valve being no, decompetent. No, not unless you've had surgery or if you okay. have a genetic uh, right. uh, issue there. Uh, and so this may be, I don't know, for sure, but this may be one of the reasons why even some plant-based vegetarians never run into B12 problems. This has been a confusing factor for many people. Some people <coughs> never consume <coughs> any animal products whatsoever. Mm -hmm. uh, and we know that they're not eating foods that are high in B12. If we check their B12 levels, they're fine. Uh, they're up there where the normal individual is. However, there are, are some vegetarians, a significant percentage of vegetarians that are plant-based that will start to run into B12 problems. And it takes a year after they change their diet uh, before this starts to occur because B12 lasts uh, in the system. It's stored in the system uh, for up to a year. But then after that, the B12 levels uh, begin to drop, and they can. Uh, drop to the place where actually disease results. Uh, oh. Depression can result, fatigue, loss of energy, anemia can result, and even nervous, uh, uh, permanent neurological deficits can occur if the B12 levels are extremely low. And that's very dangerous. You know, talk, talk, talk a little bit about that because I mean, don't, we don't want to minimize this problem. It can be a real problem. It can be a real problem. In fact, I know some individuals uh, that, and, and well, one individual in particular, uh, was on a very good diet, but uh, was not concerned about the B12 issue. Uh, she had extremely low B12 levels uh, for a long time and ended up with a permanent neurologic deficit. I mean, she walks uh, bent over. Uh, she has no position sense, meaning that if she were to close her eyes, she'd fall over uh, because her posterior columns and her spinal cord are no longer active because they didn't have B12 in them. Uh, and uh, it's a crippling uh, disorder uh, that uh, she experienced uh, simply due to not enough B12 in the diet. We're talking with Dr. Neil Nedley. We're talking about common concerns that come up concerning the vegetarian lifestyle. We've talked about some of the advantages. We want to continue with those concerns and continue our discussion concerning B12. Join us when we come back. Are you confused about the endless stream of new and often contradictory health information? With companies trying to sell new drugs and special interest groups paying for studies that spin the facts, where can you find a common sense approach to health? One way is to ask for your free copy of Dr. Arnott's 24 Realistic Ways to Improve Your Health. Dr. Timothy Arnott and the Lifestyle Center of America produced this helpful booklet of 24 short, practical health tips based on scientific research and the Bible that will help you live longer, happier, and healthier. For example, did you know that women who drink more water lower the risk of a heart attack? Or that seven to eight hours of sleep a night can minimize your risk of ever developing diabetes? Find out how to lower your blood pressure and much more. If you're looking for help, not hype, then this booklet's for you. Just log on to 3abn.org and click on free offers or call us during regular business hours. You'll be glad you did. Welcome back. We're glad that you've joined us, or if you've just joined us, we're glad you're with us. 
We've been talking about the vegetarian lifestyle and its advantages, but also some concerns that come up. And joining us to talk about this is Dr. Neil Nedley. We're glad you're with us. And we've talked about some of these advantages and we've talked about some of the concerns. Um, and we were in a discussion about vitamin B12. You know, I heard a number of years ago that there are more meat eaters that have vitamin B12 deficiency than there are vegetarians. Is that correct? That's true. Yeah, a lot of people think, well, if I'm a meat eater, this is something I don't have to worry about because uh, meat has more B12 in it simply because it has more bacteria in it. Uh, you know, the bacteria is what produces the B12, and uh, meat, uh, the longer it sits uh, around and the longer those bacteria have a chance to produce their stuff, uh, the more B12 it might have in it. But uh, the problem uh, with people as they age is they tend to produce less intrinsic factor in their stomach. And the parietal cells in their stomach just won't work like they used to. And thus, they're not able to absorb the B12. So even though meat may have plenty of B12, there's two problems with meat as a B12 source. Number one, B12 can be tightly bound to the fibers in the meat itself that may not be absorbed that readily. And then secondly, if they're not making enough intrinsic factor, they're certainly not going to be able to absorb it. So regardless if you're a vegetarian or a meat eater, you need to be aware of the importance of vitamin B12. Over 90% of people with B12 deficiency are meat eaters. And thus, I check it out uh, routinely uh, in people as part of their general health physical because B12 deficiency is so common, particularly if someone's over the age of 50. I'll be checking that out because that's when it becomes even a lot more common. Okay, we talked about uh, the concerns. We talked about the neuronal concerns, the, you know, the nerves and different things. And you talked about the lady who had real deficits as a result of that. What about B12 deficiency and brain health? Well, uh, there is quite a link. Uh, there's an, it, B12 is important for brain health. B12 deficiency uh, has been linked to diseases such as Alzheimer's disease, uh, Parkinson's uh, disease has also uh, been linked oh, really? and other uh, degenerative um, uh, diseases of the brain can be linked to B12 deficiency. Depression actually can be caused by B12 deficiency. If we don't have enough B12 around, we won't make enough SAM-E in the brain. And SAM-E is needed for the final step to give the methyl donation to make dopamine, serotonin, and norepinephrine, three important neurotransmitters in the brain. And that's why when someone is B12 deficient, we give them a B12 shot. Boy, within 24 hours, they've got energy. Uh, they're feeling a lot better. They're making those three neurotransmitters again. Well, what about B12 and homocysteine? This is some of the new evidence. Uh, homocysteine is a, uh, can be a toxin. Uh, and it's, it's an amino acid that's produced in excess if we don't have enough B12 or enough B6 or folate around. And high homocysteine levels have been linked to certain uh, nervous system problems, including Alzheimer's, as well as increasing, dramatically increasing the risk of heart disease and stroke. And so, uh, you know, interestingly, you can be on a vegetarian diet, which is going to decrease your incidence of heart disease and stroke. But if your B12 level is real low, your homocysteine can be up. And thus, you may have a risk factor for heart disease that isn't uncovered by looking at your cholesterol levels. And so that's why I've begun the process in my office when I see patients of not only checking their cholesterol levels, but also checking their homocysteine levels. You may want to get your doctor uh, to do that for you. And if you find out that it's elevated, it could be related to a deficiency of B12. That's right. And that's when we would check the B12 levels uh, or the folate levels. But B12 deficiency is a lot more common than folate deficiency, actually. What about drinking milk? Uh, will that take care of my B12 problems? Well, this is one of the biggest myths out there, and it's a myth that's also present among uh, Seventh-day Adventists. You know, uh, interestingly, I've heard some people state that if you're on a plant-based diet uh, and you're not taking a B12 supplement, all you need to do is drink milk, uh, and you'll get plenty of B12, and you won't need to worry about it. Uh, that is actually not true. B uh, milk is not a reliable source of B12, and we have a graphic uh, that explains this. Uh, assuring adequate B12 intake is often cited as one of the main reasons for adding dairy to a vegan diet. Uh, however, not only is evidence lacking to support such a conclusion, but there's actually data to the contrary. 1999 Australian study eloquently illustrated the fact that dairy doesn't necessarily prevent vitamin B12 deficiency. 
Uh, this was a study uh, that was done on Seventh-day Adventist ministers who were not using B12 supplements. They were both vegans, which means totally plant-based vegetarians, or lacto-ovo vegetarians. And both groups tended to have lower vitamin B12 levels than those who ate meat. Mm. And in fact, in that particular study, the lacto-ovo vegetarians were just as low as the vegan vegetarians. Uh, and so uh, don't rest assured that you're getting B12 uh, from those sources. Okay. So even though vegetarians have a lower incidence of vitamin B12 deficiency, uh, they need to be aware of it, and uh, so also do meat eaters. But uh, what are some sources then of vitamin B12 that we can uh, rely on? We don't want to get it from the bacteria of our teeth by not brushing our teeth. We don't particularly want to get it from our large bowel and all the things that we mentioned, so where can we look? Well, you know, first I must uh, uh, correct you a little bit uh, there. It's true that if we took a, take a look at all groups of people that are B12 deficient, 90% of them or more would be meat eaters. Right. But uh, as far as the incidence of B12 deficiency is concerned, Much the incidence higher? is higher in vegetarians okay. than it is in the meat eating population. And so that's why it is the big vegetarian concern because okay. it's kind of the only factor that the people <coughs> can find out there where vegetarians might have more of a problem than the average meat eater. Mm -hmm. But uh, having said that, uh, it, it doesn't need to be a problem if vegetarians are consuming sources of B12. And uh, these are some of the sources of B12. We have them uh, up there on the screen. Uh, <laughs> organic soybeans would have very low amounts. Uh, organic means grown in heavy and manure. And of course, you might get some B12 just through osmosis through the plants that way. Uh, egg whites, uh, 0.2. Skim milk, 0.3. Uh, soy milk, uh, 1.0, and of course that's because it is uh, supplemented. Total cereal uh, will have 100% of your daily requirements, uh, which is 6 uh, micrograms per day. Uh, and then uh, there are other additional sources of B12. Okay, so total cereal, of uh, product 19 cereal. Fortified soy or rice milk. It's hard to find any milks out there right now that are not <laughs> supplemented with B12 because this has become an issue. And then there are many supplements that you can take out there, vitamin supplements and B12 supplements that are out there. Uh, if you were to consume cow's milk as a source of B12, the skim milk would be preferable. But again, that's not a guarantee uh, that your B12 levels are going to go up that much because there actually is less in cow's milk than there is in most of the soy milks today. Yeah, okay, so those are the um, vegetarian sources of B12. There were some overall sources and then some... Yeah, and what I would like to recommend to the average vegetarian out there is if you don't have a source, a laboratory source, where you can get your B12 level checked every year, which I can get. I mean, our own laboratory does a very good analysis of B12. But if you don't have an access to that, just be safe and take a B12 supplement. They're very cheap. Uh, they're very effective. Uh, you can absorb them under your tongue, or if you chew them, they get more readily absorbed. You don't want to swallow them whole because you aren't going to absorb them as much. 100 micrograms a day would be plenty. Uh, you only need six, but 100 micrograms is an assurance, and there's no problem with getting uh, that much B12. Even 1,000 micrograms a day is not a problem. Uh, but if you're consuming huge amounts, like 3,000 micrograms a day, then that will start to begin to shut down your melatonin levels. You know, an interesting question that uh, you may have thought about, so I'm just going to throw it out there, and that is, you know, we often talk about how science validates the diet of Genesis 1:29, and then adding the vegetables later in Genesis chapter 3. But this seems to be kind of the, the one that it doesn't seem to, to hold true to, what have you thought about that over the years? Well, uh, you know, and that's why uh, some people uh, have an issue with this and kind of, you know, uh, refuse to, uh, to consider B12 supplements. It's kind of interesting. Ellen White spoke about this. Uh, there were people in her day who had totally gone to plant-based sources of nutrition, and they didn't have B12 supplements back then. And they were getting ill. Dr. Kress was one of them. And she told him specifically to get back on dairy and eggs, particularly eggs, she said, more so than dairy. You see, eggs were a better source 
of, uh, of B12 than the milk was. Uh, and then she said that eventually God would work this problem out. Uh, but uh, she said for her now, you need the animal foods. And uh, of course, I think he has worked it out simply because B12 is so readily available and it's the only thing that's not there. Now in the original diet, uh, there probably was B12 there. Or, you know, we didn't have to worry about washing the dirt away. Uh, you know, uh, you just got the fruits and the vegetables from the garden and what came with them uh, was probably uh, the B12 there. But now due to the pesticides and those type of things, everyone wants to wash their fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we may be uh, washing away some of the B12 there. Uh, we don't really realize all the intricacies of it. We do know that about half of vegetarians will never run into a B12 problem, uh, even though they're totally plant-based. The other half can, and so just to be on the sure side, uh, just take a B12 supplement. Like I said, it's cheap, it's effective, and it will prevent you a lot of problems uh, down the road. You have a couple graphics on omega-3. Talk, talk to me about that briefly. That's another concern of vegetarians, that they may not be getting enough omega-3. Omega-3 primarily is present in fish, and uh, one of the graphics shows us the fish that are high in omega-3, drumfish, tuna, uh, salmon, higher yet, halibut, and, and mackerel, or I should say Atlantic mackerel. But there are plant sources. Yes, I should mention that all of those fish that are high in omega-3, they're all clean fish. They all have fins and scales. The, okay. the fish that are not clean, very poor <coughs> sources of, of omega-3. Okay, and then what about plant sources? Then? Plant sources are the preferable way because you don't have to worry about mercury and you don't have to worry about toxins. And the plant sources are up on the screen. Almonds uh, come out pretty good there. Green soybeans, much higher in omega-3. Again, wheat germ, if you're eating white bread, you're not getting your omega-3, you're getting it through the whole wheat or the wheat germ. Black walnuts, 1,000 milligrams. English walnuts are higher than black walnuts. And the highest source is flaxseed, mm -hmm. uh, as far as plant source. There's also a seed called chia seeds that are almost as high as flaxseed. And so you can get omega-3 if you're paying attention to uh, uh, those type of foods in your diet and eating them occasionally. Well, thank you so much for being with us today, Dr. Nedley. And thank you for your web page as well, nedleypublishing.com and drnedley.com. A lot of resources there for our viewers as well. Thank you for being with us. We've talked about the advantages of a vegetarian diet, and they are many. Uh, they far outweigh the concerns, but those concerns are valid as well. Don't just minimize them. Take uh, the advice today to heart and put it into practice. And we know as a result that you will have health that lasts, not just now, but for a lifetime.